everyone welcome back to the channel you are turning into part three of our italian vlog we started things off in venice then moved over to positano slash amalfi and now we are here in rome with the fam the whole beck fam <laughs> but before we get too far my name is jordan beck and i'm elaine trebeck and together we're around the world in beck and our goal is to hit 50 countries and 50 u.s states and today we're still in Italy. Yeah. So we'll be traveling Rome for a little bit, but tomorrow we're gonna hit another country. Country number 24. And now we've arrived here in Rome with the rest of the family. After leaving Positano is a quick three hour drive and um, we're still here with the family. So that's gonna be my mom, Tamara, my dad, Tim, and my sister, Haley. Now my mom and dad have been here before in Rome and they did a food tour that they talk about all the time. So they're actually gonna be taking us on here in the next 30 minutes and Let's uh, continue to stick with our theme of doing a food tour every city we go. So they said it's a lot of food, a lot of different things. I'm very excited to try it. And uh, also shout out to Cadillan Party of Four for giving us brand new mic equipment. Thanks guys. Tim. Oh my gosh. Three years ago. Yeah. Our first place is just behind the corner. I would say let's get sit. Let's enjoy something to eat. And let's cheers. Let's cheers. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. Uh, that's cool. Cheers to everybody. Cheers. Nice to meet you guys. Mm. Good wine. Good to be back. Yes. Got a beautiful day. Just finished up at stop one of the food tour and we had this like risotto that was deep fried with mozzarella. They all had some type of beef stuff and I got to do an eggplant and anchovy one. Never had anchovies, so it was actually pretty good. And as we were sitting there, she was telling us different things about the city of Rome. One thing that really took note for me was that she mentioned that Rome is like lasagna, like it has layers and they just built upon each other as they were building the city. Kind of went up as well as like scrunched together. So now we were on to stop two and we're gonna be walking through some local neighborhoods. So this is mortadella and pistachios. Mortadella, it's uh, pork, usually it's sliced and it is cooked, it's not cured, as the salami or the prosciutto. Okay. You gonna love it. All we right. eat it as a taco, so you got uh, the napkins. I would not use the, use oh, the yeah, like, like forks this. and things, because you eat it as a taco. Go ahead. Here, In the okay. same way, you eat the, the maritoso with the whipped cream. Sweet pistachios roll. on top? Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Time because mortadella is made with mm. pistachios. <laughs> Porky, the roll, sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the that bun is bun. still sweet, but it's they like fill a, it with something salty. Yeah, very sweet. So what are those rolls called? Hawaiian roll. Hawaiian roll. What do you think? Huh? It's good. Very good. Maritozo. It's a very like light bread and very fluffy meat. I'm not sure if meat can be fluffy, but it is. It's sweet. It's kind of uh, interesting for me. This texture thing. The meat's kind of. Uh, yeah, it's just really fluffy. I don't know how else to describe it, but the bread alone, I could eat just all day. Yeah, it's good. It's like a Hawaiian roll, yeah. We made a little pit stop to the Santa Maria. It is this beautiful church. She said it's the very first one that they ever started building in Rome, but it's not the first one that was finished. Inside, you look around, like the whole ceiling has real gold. It's absolutely beautiful. And I guess they chose this spot because at one point in time, olive oil started seeping from the ground and, you know, can't question a miracle.
stop number three. We got pizza on the way. I don't know exactly what she's bringing out, but she said there's something particular she wants us to try. So we're gonna stay adventurous. Eggplant. Eggplant. Fresh tomatoes. Basil and stracciatella. The stracciatella it is the inside of the burrata. So it is the gricia. So we do pasta alla gricia, which is basically the base of the carbonara, because carbonara it's pecorino romano cheese and black pepper. Then instead of adding the egg, we just add the pork cheek. So good. It is very good. Oh my goodness. That one is so good. I love that and one. And then it's so fresh as yeah. well because we eat this cold. Want to buy this? Yeah. So I've got one, it's got like a cream sauce and then some type of like bacon on it. it tastes a lot like carbonara pasta. I had artichokes. Tomatoes, some kind of cheese. It's cold toppings on a hot pizza. Different, but very good. Because inside you, you know how much. Yeah, you try the real deal, the porchetta. Have you ever heard about porchetta? Porchetta, it's a dream. It is the wall pico, which has been bone, has been uh, seasoned with rosemary, black pepper, and salt. Wrap it again in the skin and goes in the oven for like 10 hours. Depends how big it is. It's there, but it's like it's not just one part of it. It's all of it, you know, without okay. the without the interiors, of course. Yeah. just got done at Elementare Yakosili. It's a grocery store named after Yakosili. And we went in there, he had buffalo mozzarella, which was unbelievable. Now buffalo mozzarella was different than regular mozzarella, or mozzarella as they call it, because it was harder and chewier. And the texture was a little different, but the taste was great. And then we had this incredible pork from the pig that they basted in olive oil and some kind of pepper and did it for like 15 hours. And it was on top of like a toasted focacci, which they call pizza, and it was outstanding. So if you ever come to Rome, find the grocery store, Elementari Yatsatori, and go get yourself some of that. All right, we're hurting a little bit. There's so much food. The last stop was pasta and then, you know, a side of pasta. It was absolutely amazing, but I think probably my favorite part was the saying that we learned on the door, which is, if you provoke me, I will eat you, which I think is the new Bic saying. Um, I think we're all gonna learn how to say it in Italian, you know? That's uh, never a phrase you're gonna not need. We did it. I thought something impossible, but we did it tonight. We have completely filled the hunger for the Bex. So, feeling pretty successful. But now we're gonna turn in and we'll catch you guys bright and early for tomorrow's activity. Uh-oh. Buongiorno. Oh, sorry. I meant to say, good morning. I guess we've just been in Italy so long, I'm getting everything mixed up. Oh well, but today we are in country number 24, the smallest one in the world, the Vatican City. Last time we ended with a food tour and of course we have to start the day with breakfast, so just more food and food. Um, 
but our breakfast in the Vatican City starts at about 8.15 and then we're going to be touring the rest of the country, which is uh, interesting to say just how small this place is. After breakfast, our tour guide took us inside to begin with some paintings. This tour guide was highly qualified and was actually certified through the Vatican after taking a series of very hard tests just to be qualified. Only a few make it. We could ask him any question and he knew just about everything. He eventually took us to a dark room that had a bunch of tapestries hung up on the wall that were woven together using a very fine silk. Being able to learn the history of all of these different tapestries was pretty fascinating. We had this like walking book with us as a tour guide and just being able to ask him any question was was probably one of the best parts of the tour. Our guide is super helpful. He's kind of taking us chronologically throughout Vatican City and the different artwork and everything that there is to know about this place. Uh, one of the cool facts that we've learned so far is that this used to be the entrance to the Vatican up until 2000 when they expanded it. So it was more like an airport terminal so they could accommodate more people, but it's a double helix. So there's a different entrance to go up as there is to go back down. Pretty cool. So I think we're off to the Sistine Chapel now. He told us a little bit about it outside already and uh, it's because we cannot film in there. So we'll just have to show you guys the little clips that we took outside. It felt like all day had been leading up to this moment where we finally made it to the Sistine Chapel, and the ceiling was beyond worth the wait. It depicts nine different scenes of Genesis, three, the creation of humanity, three stories of Adam and Eve, and three stories of Noah and his family. And it is wild to think that Michelangelo did the whole thing painting above his head, and it only took him four years to do. Kind of makes me feel like I've been slacking in like every area of my life. If you're ever there, look around to other things too. It's not just the ceiling, the walls are gorgeous and so is the rest of the Vatican, honestly. The statues that you've seen here were originally painted and looked more lifelike, but I guess over time the paint had faded and people didn't like how they looked, so they ended up just painting them white. But one thing very interesting that I found was going through looking at all the plaques for the different statues and I noticed that there is two statues called Fortune. So I guess double the fortune. Making our way towards the Sistine Chapel and uh, tour guide took us through a pit stop of what he called the Marble Zoo. Can totally see why, there's a lot of animals in there. It felt like hallway after hallway, just a big buildup leading to the Sistine Chapel. But on the way, we did find one tapestry that my dad had talked about from his last journey to Italy. This tapestry was of Jesus, and as you walk from left to right down the hallway, you see that his arm and his fingers are pointing at you as though he's kind of tracking you. Eventually, we made it to the map room where they had all of these very beautiful and detailed maps, with the center of the Vatican being the orientation of the map. We're still making our way towards the Sistine Chapel, and as we're walking, looking at the ceiling, he said that it took a team of painters several years to do it, but just imagine being responsible for this ceiling, and it's not even the one people are here to see. It was a long hallway leading up to the Sistine Chapel with hallways that were beautiful. But let me tell you, nothing compares to the Sistine Chapel itself. High above the ceiling, multiple paintings. Like, wow, I, part of me wishes I could have grabbed the photo, but uh, sometimes those things just to be taken in, appreciate yeah. its beauty. Definitely better in the moment. And it's strange coming out of the area because then there's just these huge archways with blank walls so it's kind of like a palate cleanser after you've seen everything like floor to ceiling absolutely covered and then immediately afterward you enter the giant square where apparently the oldest church ever is oldest located. catholic church yes oldest catholic church ever created is located so now our tour guide's grabbing some tickets i guess and we'll be headed in there shortly Next up was St. Peter's Basilica, and this place was freaking massive. 
They built it where St. Peter's tomb is, it's the name, and they were not joking around when they built this thing over 400 years ago. The dome itself is the biggest one on earth. It's actually so tall, you can fit the entire Statue of Liberty inside. And the church is so long that they have markers on the ground showing you where other famous churches in the world stand in comparison. So where you see Jordan is standing right here is actually where Westminster Abbey is. And look, it still goes on. It is incredible. It's still an active church to this day. You can even do confessions in several different languages and uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. After wrapping up the tour, we went to a gift shop that had a bunch of different religious items that interestingly enough, you can actually have blessed by the Pope or one of the Cardinals. And uh, later after it's been blessed, they'll deliver it to your hotel, which I think is pretty unique. The only downside about the Vatican, at least the St. Peter's Basilica, is that it's exposed to all the sunlight and uh, it's getting hot today. So everybody was ready to go back to the hotel and change. So we did that as well as uh, grab the quick slice of pizza. But now the plan is to wait for our tour guide to pick us up here and go to the next important place in Rome. Wow, that's so cool. That's unbelievable. Yes, this is the OG of the Super Bowl. Do you remember about the Super Bowl? <laughs> we just made it to the Coliseum, and uh, our ticket says to go into this gate, which is efficiently numbered. I guess they started it all. The deep pool. <laughs> they just want the. They just wanted the iron to melt it down to turn it into weapons, coins, decoration for churches, bells, uh, crosses. Wow. They wanted the iron. Of course we went to the Colosseum. You're not going to do Rome and not do the Colosseum. And our guide was a wealth of knowledge. She knew so much about everything about this 2000 year old structure. And I'm really glad that we had her with us. But man, oh man, it was hot outside. It's hard to believe that we really were able to enjoy it as much as we did. And uh, I think the boys definitely enjoyed it the most, breaking out into their own little gladiator fight. see anything because my floppy hat. <laughs> we made it to the Coliseum. One of the spots I've wanted to go to probably since forever. I mean, <laughs> it's really cool to be here. Yeah, Jordan's a big history buff, so getting to see things like this is right up his alley. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of uh, our time in Athens. Yeah, like, just look at this, and it's still standing today. We've left the Colosseum and went over near Venus's temple. And as standing on top of the temple, you can look out and what the guide said is that you can basically see the entire history of Rome. There's like little bits and pieces of architecture dating back to like Romulus's time, the founder of Rome. It's really interesting to be able to see it all. The last time we updated, we were walking around, just kind of enjoying all of the sites, the Colosseum, the big plaza area where a lot of the ruins were, but 
boy, oh boy, was it hot. So again, went back to the room, decided to change, and everybody just kind of took a little siesta, waited for the sun to go down, and now it is much cooler out. So our attempts to find a place to eat are um, kind of crazy right now, but there is one place that has phenomenal reviews, but there's an hour and a half wait. So now we're just gonna play the patient game and see what we can find. Hopefully we can uh, find a place quick as everyone's pretty hungry. Probably some of the best pasta I've had in Rome. And it's sad that it's gonna be our last dinner in Rome, but it's still not our last day. And then to uh, finish up for the evening, we decided to get some gelato. Really good place. A uh, little tip though, our tour guide yesterday said that if the pistachio is green, to avoid the place. So you have that. But that's gonna end it for tonight and we'll catch you tomorrow for some breakfast. Hello everyone. This is our very last little bit, as you can probably tell, because we're definitely in the airport right now. But we just decided to enjoy the last little bit with family instead of really focusing on filming. Yeah, it was good though. We woke up and went to a highly recommended like cafe. Mm -hmm. We were able something to try something Haley found. Yeah, something she found. We were able to try a uh, sweet. Um, what was it called? It was like a little roll thing filled with whipped cream. Yeah. I didn't have one, but you guys did. I had a coffee. Yeah, it was always pretty good. good. <laughs> pretty good. And then from there, I was like, you know what sounds good right after eating? More food. <laughs> and I wanted to end our last day in Rome and Italy with some pasta. So this little place on the corner, they were making it in the window and the guy convinced us to go inside. And yeah. It was good. It was really good. And uh, I am fooded out for a while. Nothing but fruits and vegetables <laughs> for like three weeks straight. I'm done with pasta. <laughs> yeah, which I didn't think was possible, but here we are. <laughs> it was so good to have everyone come and visit us in London and England and the whole thing and then taking the whole family and just being able to experience all of Italy with them was... Yeah, I can't believe I hadn't seen them in almost three years, but it's a... Uh, it's been really good. I'm super glad that we were able to do this all together. It's an like unbelievable experience. Yeah, it was. So thanks, Mom and Dad, for, <laughs> for all of it, uh, as well as Haley for being here. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, Haley's also here. Yeah, and uh, helping us with some re re restaurant recommendations, as well as gelato. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna go ahead and cut the video right here, but we will see you guys next week. Just don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, so now time to catch a flight back to England. All right, bye. bye.